Cool. Well, we're at the Beyond Cinema Lounge at the uh, at the Locations Trade Show. Aaron, director of the North Carolina Film Office. Uh, firstly, like, you know, where did you start? Where was the what was the thing that you did before this role? Before uh, before this role with North. Well, I was the Utah Film Commissioner. Oh, you were. So yeah, so I've been a film commissioner in two states. Prior to that, um, I worked in Los Angeles for Canal Plus for a while. Um, uh, I, I worked. Um, Salt Lake producing crime prevention videos. So yeah. Been a um, so many uh, other film commissioners come from a tourism background or right. a governmental background. Do you think it's you know an imperative almost that people come from a production background these days? I, I think it's important for them to understand production. Yeah. Um, certainly, you know, maybe ten years ago, I, I would say it was a must. Now, I think it's more important than to probably have a financial background and a political background to understand tax incentives and to navigate their legislators. So how do you go from being, how do you go from Utah to North Carolina? Um, they asked nicely. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, it was, it, was, it was a good time for me and my family to, to move to North Carolina. Um, and North Carolina, when I was meeting with them, they were, they showed me they were committed to the industry and we've been able to build uh, a great industry there in the past five years. If, if I talk about the last five years, it does feel like in the last five to ten years with guys like David Gordon Green and the North Carolina School of the Arts, if there's a real buzz around filmmaking in North Carolina. Yeah, so not only do we, we have you know big studio projects, we do have kids graduated from the School of the Arts, people like David Gordon Green and, and uh, Danny McBride and Jody Hill um, who are making their name. Uh, so it's exciting to see those guys flourish and and get ahead. Is that part of your role too? I mean, you know, we see the banners advertising the incentives for people sure. to come to film in North Carolina, but is it is your role as much about helping local filmmakers flourish as it is about bringing production in? Yeah, certainly. We want we want an indigenous um, um, filmmaking group. You know, I think um, uh, if you build it from the inside, we only we only will be be stronger. You know, everybody wants a a John Hughes or a Barry Levinson who props their their territory up and uh, right. you know hopefully David and Danny can be those guys in a little different way. <laughs> Although you know traditionally with states that aren't um, you know the the kind of uh, core filmmaking states, sure. um, you have people come through these systems in North Carolina where they can experiment and do something original, and then they end up going across to LA and disappearing. Sure. Yeah, is right. there is there a sense of that, or is it or is it become like so kind of exciting over the last few years there that you find people are, are staying more and more? Well, we're finding that that they are coming to Los Angeles to uh, you know kind of. Uh, get the experience and, and, and get the context they need, uh, but they're striving to come back. Um, uh, you know, just the nature of the global nature of this industry now, it's, they, they can't always stay there. Um, and I, I think with, with having the big features like Iron Man 3 or Hunger Games, it, it is training. Those films uh, give a lot of training to some younger guys. Um, hopefully help them build their, their skill set and stay. What, what do you think was the turning point for getting productions like that into the state? The incentive. That's Just as simple yeah, as that? as simple as that. You know, it, I wish it, were, it was able to say uh, our awesome locations and some great salesmanship, but it was, it was, it's the incentives. And so now that that's in place, and obviously other states are yep. competing and trying to get their business up and going as well, what are you guys doing to kind of maintain that leverage? Are you looking at like changing it again, or no, is there some we, other components? No, just kind of sustain it. We, we, ours is not the most aggressive. I like to say ours is the smartest because uh, we leverage our infrastructure against our credit, and you know there's a, there is a 25 refundable percent refundable credit. But once you add in the added value that North Carolina offers, um, um, that that percentage can rise. Um, so we're just trying to sustain it. Um, we're not in a battle to get the best percentage. Um, we know our market and, and that's who we're battling against is, is our market. If, so. there, if there was something you could ask for from the government, what would it be? Um, maybe to enhance our uh, above the line credit. We, we, we qualify the first million. Maybe bump that up to two or three million dollars. I think would, yeah. would really put us over the top. And you know, we talk about these big projects coming to North Carolina. I remember at Sundance you were talking about just the massive numbers in terms of dollars of production yeah. that have been coming to, to NC over the last little while. Yeah, so in 2011, so in 2010 we did about 75 million in direct production. In 2011 we did 245. 
already in June of 2012, we're at 270 and we'll be well over 300, and that's direct spend. So does that mean that your office is multiplying in numbers to accommodate and help I wish, yeah, no, it's just, we, <laughs> we're still a small three-person office. You know, we do have regional film commissions around the state that help us, but it would be great. So that's one thing I'd ask the legislature. We need more employees. Yeah. So. Do you have a favorite of the films that have shot Holly or in part in North Carolina? Do you have um, a You know, I'm a huge superhero fan, so I'm excited right now about Iron Man 3. Yeah. Um, it's been fun to, it's just a massive show. And what's the sort of impact that you guys have directly? Like, what, what have you been helping them out with that you found that they've been Well, we, first, we, the recruiting process, it was, you know, it was almost you know, an eight-month-long process. Um, and right now, you know, obviously, we help them with locations. Um, we help, the, help them try to keep them secluded and secret. That's been the biggest challenge is um, never had to really deal with paparazzi. You know, the first day of filming, Someone found out, all of a sudden there's news helicopters flying over, paparazzi are there trying to get shots of Gwyneth and, and Robert Downey Jr. So we've had to call the news stations and say, get your shots and get out of there, because you're running. And are they accommodating? They are, they understand. They understand it's a it's a business. You know, yeah. they have to get their business done. We just had to explain it to them, and they're, they're very accommodating. If they're allowed to get a couple shots. And, yeah, so. and probably helps the production in the long run oh, if they're sure. not disruptive, yeah. they're yeah. there for a second or yeah. two. Um, if I was in North Carolina and there was one thing I needed to see or eat before I left, what would it be? Eat, probably. You'd have to either have uh, some barbecue uh, and maybe a Krispy Kreme. Um, and to do, if you like to drive fast, I'd say go to Charlotte Motor Speedway and get in a car with a race car driver. It'll freak you out. Has any film used that properly? Yeah. Uh, Talladega Nights. Oh, of course. And then uh, Pepsi just did a couple commercials with Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Jeff Gordon. So Very cool. Yeah. Well, thanks right for on. taking a few minutes out Thank with us. Yeah. Cheers. Yeah.